JC here again for RetireCheap.Asia. Guess what? We've got a member that's moved over to Chiang Mai, and uh, we're actually out today at a, a fishing park, a lake, and uh, because uh, our friend Guy here, who's a member of our uh, membership site, is an avid fisherman. <laughs> at least over here, you're avid. <laughs> yes. Um, and um, so we're going to do a little interview with the guy um, and see how long have you been here now? I got here May 23rd, so just so about just a tad over two months now. A tad over two months. So this is a good time to, uh, to ask him about his thoughts. Now, one thing i got to tell you about Guy. Guy's got cojones, I'll tell you <laughs> what, because he's done something that I don't really recommend for everybody to do. But... Um, um, you actually came to live over here without having ever been here. Is that correct? That's correct. Which is amazing. But the disclaimer to this was <laughs> you knew more about Thailand than I did having lived here for 10 years because uh, Guy did his research. He I actually, did research a lot. He actually um, spent a lot of time. How much time did you actually, from the time you said, I actually want to live in Thailand to the time you came here, how much time of research and everything... Uh, Pass by. It was probably give or take about a year, about um, a year. because of the time I made the decision and, was, and found out that I would be able financially to come here, that was the first part. And then once I realized that, hey, I can actually do this, then it was like, okay, I better start researching what I'm getting myself into. Um, and I used uh, several resources. I used uh, primarily the internet. Um, uh, and then it was when I rolled onto your site that I began to really see that the, the, the true cost. Uh, I mean, there were some other sites that generalized a little bit, but yours was the first site that gives you that, you know, this is what it is, here's the market, here's the price. Mm -hmm. uh, so that really helped me make the decision also that I didn't know where in Thailand I wanted to go. And uh, Chiang Mai... But you had made the decision Thailand was the place. Yes. But Chiang Mai became... Why Thailand the place? Um... I have a lot of friends that have been in the military, mm -hmm. um, and a few people that weren't military that have been over here. I've never talked to anyone who didn't come to Thailand and said, I'd love to go back there, or I'd love to live there. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I really never heard any negatives. Uh, um, the, the cost of living was uh, also, you know, probably the primary point, mm -hmm. because, um, and opposed to, like, Cambodia and Laos, Chiang Mai, or Thailand is, it's more developed as a country mm -hmm. uh, so I, I like that part the people are you know were notoriously friendly um, and it's it's really reminiscent of my early days when I was in Japan and a little bit when I go down to Tijuana in Mexico because in uh, Mexico it was you know, the streets are this similar here hey so we, actually we're fishing here and uh, he just got a bite on his line so you get to uh, experience uh, experience this as well now this lake this lake does uh, does it have anything now what I've seen you catch is um, as a, a member of the catfish family is swai and the only reason I knew it was swai because my dad told me find out about this fish because he's buying these things um, in the store packaged up frozen fillets for like three dollars for like 15 of these things I'm going <laughs> what is this so I actually asked somebody a tie and went in the market and actually saw them and then I got a picture, and then when I saw the picture of you holding this, and I go, it's a swai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are big. Wait till you see if he reels this in. Uh, we might not even get this thing reeled in by the time our, <laughs> our interview's finished, because it takes a while to get these big guys in. But you'll be amazed. Um, um, so can we talk and you reel yes, at the yes, same time? Talk, okay, cool. Real. Very good. Um, uh, so... Uh, so what, what was your criteria? My criteria for moving to the country I was going to actually move to. Now, you were from the western uh, U.S., and that's why you compared uh, going down to Mexico a little bit. Right. Um, my criteria was basically threefold. There was a couple other things, but mm -hmm. basically threefold. Mm -hmm. And that was it had to be a good uh, value for the U.S. dollar. Yes. Uh, the people had to be friendly, and the food had to be good. Food's because, be good. you know, you got to hang with people. you got to eat every day. So right. those were important, and, and we had to get a value for the, for the money. Was there anything else that, that was on your list of criteria to, to move over? Um, <clears throat> I think the variety of locations. Um, you know, you've got everything from the, the Co Islands, you know, mm -hmm. that you can go to, to the mountains, uh, you know, the Bangkok, there's a huge city mm -hmm. to, and Chiang Mai being the second biggest city is, 
not really that big. Because no. Because it's a big district. And it actually has deceiving. I think it's the second biggest district or province. Um, the city itself isn't that big. You can walk it. Yes. But Chiang Mai province, province is so is, big. Is it encompasses so much that that's how it becomes the second biggest uh, in the country. Um, but what's interesting about Chiang Mai and why I like it is even though you say it's the second biggest and um, it's still got a hometown feel to it, doesn't it? It, it does, it does. Um, and uh, having been at Bien Goa for a couple of months now, I mean... By I've, the way, that's where he's staying. It's, yes, a, it's a, a service, service department. Service yes. department. Mm -hmm. And um, the staff has been kind of, they've taken me with them to go out to dinner a few times. Um, we went to the Rimping Market. Oh, and they um, in Hotel Six does that, don't they? No. <laughs> <laughs> the staff doesn't go eat with you? <laughs> no. So, uh, you know, and that's, it, they make you feel like a family almost mm -hmm. when you're there. And um, uh, it, it, just about anything you want in Chiang Mai is available. There's a few things, Columbia shirts that might be yeah, a little bit tough yeah. to get. But, um, I got to talk to Columbia about that too, you know? <laughs> I used to be able to get them, can't get them anymore, so I need a sponsorship. That's right. <laughs> so if anybody from Columbia is watching, hey, you know, I'll promote your stuff. I like it. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I'd say... But most of all, you can get everything. Did you yeah. buy your rod and reel with you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I didn't bring mine with me, mm -hmm. so I bought them here. The only thing I haven't found over here yet in Chiang Mai that they have, like in Patia, is a big pool hall. Like, you know, mm -hmm. They have pool tables at the bars, etc., usually single ones, mm -hmm. but not official nine-foot billiard tables in a, in a big pool hall, which mm -hmm. they do have in Patia. Mm -hmm. but, um, they probably have it here. We just don't know where it is. That could be... Uh, we'll have to do There's some research about that. You you found the, the fishing the fishing hole. <laughs> yeah. So um, well, um, so two months into this thing, and um, I'll tell you, two months into it, and I feel like I've been here almost a lifetime. You know, and it it's really, really great because being a member of the membership site, what was really you know, I'm sort of out there and trying to get videos to sort of, I'm, I'm sort of like the, I look at myself like the mama bird, you know, <laughs> yeah. hatching out the, 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 the little hatchlings. Mm -hmm. And once you get over here, then it's like I sort of turn you loose, you know, mm -hmm. I give you as much information as I can. I wasn't here when you actually first got here, unfortunately, but I try and spend a little time to get you acclimated to your new surroundings and then turn you loose. Well, what the cool thing is about Guy is Guy likes to do video work as well. So what he's been doing is he's been, um, actually doing some videos and stuff and passing them on to the members about right. your experiences now being in their shoes, mm -hmm. really, of having come over and, you know, and actually documenting all this, this uh, the, your new environment. And um, so, which is really cool. So, um, so two months into this thing, and I was really worried, I got to tell you, <clears throat> I was worried uh -huh. that you had such high expectations that when you got here, you'd be a little bit disappointed. disappointed. Has that happened at all, or has it met your expectations or exceeded Actually, your expectations? It's met in most regards, exceeded in some. I mean, uh, um, I knew that there were nice shopping centers, uh, such like Airport Central Mall, mm -hmm. but when you go there and you kind of walk around, um, you realize that it's equivalent to anything in the States, generally speaking. Uh, the difference, though, is, say, like Robinson's in the States, you know, it's one huge department store, so everything is Robinson's. We're here, you kind of have little individual areas within, so you, it's a little more difficult they to find They sell off things. the space to the yes. different, um, rent out the different areas to the different um, um, dealers, the different right. um, companies, which is one thing that bothers me about being here. <laughs> It's like if you go into a store that's set up that way, and you want to say you want a microwave, you got to go to Electrolux, <laughs> you got to go over to this one, you got to go over this one, you got to keep going to all these different dealers or different companies to see what they have in that thing instead of all the microwaves being in one place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and now if you go to the big department stores like <coughs> Lotus or Big C, they've got them grouped together. Right, right. And so that makes it easier. I like shopping there more yeah, just because of that. They're more American style. Yeah, that's right. That. Actually, they they are European companies. Mm -hmm. They are European companies. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, the food was what I expected, if not even better, um, except for the high salt content, which... You know, I can't help if I have high blood pressure right now, but mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's another Yeah, fish thing. sauce, they cook with fish sauce, and fish yes. sauce is salty. salty. And that's how they salt their food. Very rare will you see a, uh, a salt shaker on a table, or even in a kitchen. 
Um, unless they're cooking uh, Western food, they'll put salt. But it's mainly fish sauce because it adds that flavoring of the, the fish flavor um, and adds the, the sodium as well. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can ask for it without it, but it's going to be a little bit bland. bland. Yeah, but you can ask for you know no no salt, no sugar, no MSG. Mm -hmm. MSG is another thing they put in here that uh, people don't don't really uh, some people don't want to uh, consume, and you can ask for it without it, and they'll make it. Mm -hmm. Uh, otherwise, so the food's good. Food is good. Um, the people were as friendly as had been mentioned many times by other people. So um, that, that, in a way, it surprised me because that confirmation of that, I wasn't sure what happened or not. You know, some people times you're like, ah, eh, you know, foreigners they come over, they hang around Patia, Phuket. Yeah, they're going to be friendly down there. That's their job, kind mm -hmm. of. You know, I'm in a predominantly Thai area, but it doesn't matter. They're still it's Very interesting friendly. you say that because really there's a distinction there is when you go to the high tourist areas it's it's a it's a non-genuine friendliness mm -hmm. it's like you know some people say yeah the time smile all the time but it's not a real smile and that's true in the in the uh, areas that where they're trying to you know get the foreigners money mm -hmm. you know they're going to smile because it's a land of smiles but it's like er, another farong you know yeah, and they sort yeah. of tolerate us where if you come up and you're actually congenial and you're polite and uh, and all that, and you come up into the north, the people are genuinely friendly. Yes, yes. They're just friendly people. Uh, they'll help Without you anything, out. they don't want anything in return. In fact, a lot of times they're giving, they don't have a lot, and they're giving to you. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. come have a drink, you know, share a beer. You know, here, let's pour you a glass of beer, or uh, here's a shot of whiskey or something. or you know, last, and they're just trying to be friendly. Last time we went fishing was Kenny Allen and his wife. Uh -huh. um, yeah, another, another member, member that's actually living over here. And uh, the lady that runs the lake and she does the cooking and everything, she brought us two different plates of uh, one of fruit and another one of some fried pork just for us to try. Oh, really? You know, I mean, just brought Didn't them over. Charge Didn't for. charge us anything. Just to be, you know, introduce us to her food and what she does. And hey, you don't find that in the States usually mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. um, one thing over here. Uh, wait a minute. I think I'm yeah. gonna. I think I'm gonna actually address that right now. <laughs> now, now it's a it's a overcast day, a little it bit is. of a drizzle, and so it, it's it's not hot, but it's still humid. And he's reeling in what's the equivalent of a small Volkswagen, <laughs> um, which you hopefully you'll get a chance to see. But the one thing that's a little different, especially coming from the Western the U.S., is of, yeah, the is the humidity here. here. Yes. How are you dealing with the humidity? Well, the first few days I got As here... As the sweat yes, <laughs> runs the, down. The, the first thing. few days I was here, I was in um, Bangkok. Mm -hmm. And I walked out the hotel about 100 feet down the street and went, Jesus, how can anybody survive with this stuff? I mean, I was drenched. And I went into a little place to eat breakfast. And I couldn't even really enjoy breakfast because just sitting there, I was just pouring sweat off of me. It's um, not a good feeling when you feel the sweat running down as no. you're eating and stuff inside your clothing. So there's a couple of things I've done to combat that a little bit because I still sweat But it is better easily. up here in the north. It is, oh, way better. Bangkok is really humid and hot. Um, I if you go to the south, any of the islands are really humid and hot unless you're sitting on the beach with that sea breeze carry coming in. Carry a handkerchief. Carry a handkerchief. That's a good, um, so good you suggestion. So you know, do what I do right now. It's kind of mild. Have you got any bit. of those uh, cold towels that are in 7-Eleven and stuff? and wipe towels, them? and those yeah. are very nice. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes I'll wear a like a cotton t-shirt or an undershirt and then like a button-up shirt over a little bit, mm -hmm. maybe unbuttoned or so, just to let that one absorb the sweat a little bit so it's not running down your chest. Mm -hmm. Because when I wear my Columbia shirts, they do tend to just kind of... Absorb it. Yeah. <laughs> um, fortunately, I'm not a, uh, I mean, hate to say it, but kind of a rear end sweater because mm -hmm. one of my friends is. And I think over here... He may have trouble because if he's sitting for in a chair for a while and he gets up, his he's rear gonna end's going to be yeah, pretty he's gonna wet. Have a... I'll buy him Depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but um, besides the humidity, which is tolerable, and actually the ties kind of make fun of it. You know, they'll look at me and they'll laugh, you know, yeah. and they'll point at me. And, yeah, they don't sweat. And, yeah, and they're, yeah, they're not sweating. They're not thinking. sweaters. But um, uh, besides that, like I said, and, and you know, sometimes I have to sit there and say, man, I've been here two months. That's it. I mean, I, I've bought my motor scooter. I've got my Thai driver's license. You know, I've had my health checkup. I just kind of, you know, if you took my eyes and kind of slanted them a little bit. You'd feel like you were here, here and just fit right in. Mm -hmm. 
Was any of that information on the, the membership site helpful for you? I know you just mentioned getting a bike, driver's license. We talk about some of that stuff, and I've tried to help people yes. you know, get, you know, smooth out that learning curve. The uh, only thing that I thought was a little bit different from your video on the, on the driver's license mm -hmm. was I kind of got the impression on the video that you were going, like, to different floors a lot, mm -hmm. but it's all those windows are on one floor. In I, Chiang Mai. Yeah, in Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. yes. And I already have a motorcycle license from the States, and I had my international driver's permit. Oh, yeah, it was a slam dunk for so you. So it was. I was in and out in 45 minutes, I mm -hmm. think, uh, with license in hand. And mm -hmm. Because we had another member, and he went to Pati, and he had a big problem. Uh, they sent him out for two... Uh, two um, he wanted a car and a motorcycle license. They sent him out for two uh, health certificates, and, and then he had to go back two or three times, and he didn't pass the test. And I'm like, wait, 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 something's not right here. Mm -hmm. And it was because they weren't as helpful as they are in the north, and it's not set up the, the, the way where it's it really was, efficient. It was very so efficient. So because he, wanted to, uh, he decided the next day he wanted another license, um, this is why he had to go get another, oh, my God, <clears throat> needed to go get another uh a certificate because he didn't do it all in the same day and and all sorts of weird stuff okay, okay. Uh, i'll let you you can hold this okay i'm gonna hold this i'll see if i can get this guy yeah you out. grab this guy i think you need a tow truck to get him in wow my dad would see fillets on the plate if he saw this guy now this is a catch and release lake so we're gonna let this guy go um but check this thing out you've got to see this can you, my can, big you, fish. can you see that? <coughs> Whoa. I'm going to put them down so I can get the hook out of them. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so here is this guy. Okay, Check on. this bad boy out. Wow. Pick him up for a second. Here. <laughs> uh, anything you want to say to our members back in the members? <clears throat> there he goes. He's a happy Hi. fish back going home. Seeing the family. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Thank you. That's yeah. <laughs> that was work. It is work. <laughs> That's the hardest work you do over here, isn't it? It's about that. <laughs> Very cool. Well, let me set this thing back up now that we got the, the view of the fish. You can uh, towel off a little bit, and uh, uh, we'll be back in a second here. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Very cool. Now that's interesting because a lot of people, you know, they come over and they think, you know, if I go live over there, you know, I don't speak the language and stuff, what am I going to do all day? And here, this is something that you enjoy doing. You spend a little bit of time researching where to do it. You came with a guide the first time. That's correct. And uh, they turned you on to where the place was and everything. And you realize, hey, I can do this myself. I don't right. need a guide every day. And so there's a lot of things like this. And you mentioned that you like to play uh, billiards. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing. Now, the nice thing that people don't understand is when you actually cut that overhead so much, you can afford and you have the time to go out and do these things. You, you, you know? do, and one, one thing I can say is, you know, I'm not working, I've got basically nine extra hours five days a week, and yet I'm still having a hard time fitting everything kind of in, because I'm taking my language class, so I've got to study, you know, you're doing your emails, researching your forum. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you go out and get a bite to eat, you know, maybe you go fishing, or you want to take a scooter ride, or you just got to go shopping or something, the next thing you know, it's 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you know, time to shower up, grab something to eat again, maybe go out in the evening time, and time passes really quick. It does, it does. It does. It's amazing how fast the time goes when you're actually doing something, mm -hmm. you know, that you enjoy doing. Yes. It's, it's that thing where you're sitting in a dentist's office and time's <laughs> creeping, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but you're doing something you really enjoy and the time flies, you know. Now, some of the things that people are apprehensive about that we can talk about is, mm -hmm. one is that we talked about the food, you like the food. Uh, any issues with uh, any kind of um, uh, health issues, uh, eating food or anything like that? Um, no. Uh, you might have issues with the red ants biting you here in a second. <laughs> a few days after I arrived in Chiang Mai, you know, I started to experience a little bit of the diarrhea, and I thought I had uh, the Nmani's revenge or something. Mm -hmm. But it actually was just my bowels adjusting to the time, to the time and yeah, the food yeah, yeah. a little bit. And I was basically blocked, mm -hmm. you know, and then so only the liquid was kind of coming around. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of days later, after I lost that, I have not had any issues whatsoever. Although I did go to the pharmacy and buy some <clears throat> Imodium for the next time in case. Mm -hmm. um, 
and also some stuff for in case my stomach gets upset. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to talk about that adjusting on this week's radio show that's coming up as well, because that's a big issue about how to, I mean, it's a shock. You get over here from some people, it's a long trip, you, you don't, you know, you're sleep deprived because it's hard to sleep on planes, and you got yeah, the time layover, differences, and that's right. the, all the things, and we're going to talk about that on the radio show this week coming up, so that'll be, um, so that was one. The other thing is, you mentioned you're taking language classes, yes. language course. Yes. Um, how about dealing with, um, now you're in Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. there's a lot of foreigners, we have a lot, a big tourist industry here, so more people than not uh, speak English if you're in that central area, yes. uh, you know, which the I'm old not. city, <laughs> right, which you're not. How are you doing with the language? Um, <clears throat> I've had two weeks of classes right now. Um, I can't actually... Well, technically, I can read if you give me time. I have to wow, look at my, I have to look. Cool. I have to look at my book and you know figure out the, the the characters. But I mean, I can kind of put it together. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean I know what the word is after I've spelled it out. Um, my vocabulary is much more extensive than it was when I got here, though. It's that continuing of use of it that starts to build it into you. Mm -hmm. So right now, I forget a lot of the things that I use, or I just revert back to English and then go, I could have said that in Thai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has it been a problem um, at all with the language? No, um, most of the, if you know the numbers, um, and you can say how much, that's probably 70% of what I need most of the time, because I go to the, you know, the Tannen market over there, and mm -hmm. if I want to get, now a lot of the stuff is already marked, but, you know, if somebody says it's Song Sip, you got to know what Song Sip is, mm -hmm. or, you know, Ha Sip you know, or hop, sip, ha, or something like that. So if you don't know those, uh, then they, and sometimes if I just don't know, I just throw a big, bigger bill out and figure they just give me the proper change. Mm -hmm. I think I have been hit with farang prices a couple of times, mm -hmm. um, but not very often here. Yeah, really, the rule of thumb is to know how much things are supposed to cost and don't ask. Mm -hmm. I mean, as soon as you ask, especially with uh, the song towels, the taxis and stuff, if they know you don't know, They'll, They'll yes. gouge it for sure because they see it. As, I've always said if you want to do one word to describe um, um, Southeast Asian people, it's opportunistic. You know, if you throw, provide the opportunity for them, they'll take it. You know, it's I, just I the way they the, survive. The, the, my best example was my first ride in Bangkok. Um, I went down, there was a tuk tuk right there, and I was going down to visit my friend, maybe a kilometer or something like that. So he goes 150 baht, you know. I'm thinking he's probably ripping me off, but I really don't know what the right price would be. So I said, okay, whatever. I paid the 150. I got a cab back. It was 50 baht. Yeah. You know, so Any cabs, especially in Bangkok, we don't really have cabs that much. We do have a cab company in Chiang Mai, but you only really use it from the airport and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind but of flat in, rate. Yeah, in, in Bangkok, I always don't it's, don't it's get weird. in and sit down unless they turn on the meter. Right. If you I say, you know, you got the meter, and they go yes. If you start to go down the road and they don't flip it on, get out. Say stop, get out, and because one, you're going to get ripped off for sure. One thing that was <clears> interesting there was my friend. She lives you know, outside of Bangkok quite a ways, but works in Bangkok. And in the evening time, she was leaving the hotel, and of course the taxis are coming up and dropping off tourists. And I, it was, I forget the name of the hotel, but it's a five-star hotel I was at, just because it was packaged into my flight and hotel together. She had a difficult time getting a taxi cab that would take her that far out of Bangkok, even mm -hmm. though they're going to get paid for it because they have to make that return trip. That's right. Um, That's right. And I think like four or five taxi cabs went by before one of them finally accepted to take her. Uh, You're exactly right because they're not going to get taxis aren't going to get those fares coming back correct, in from correct. right there. Uh, they're so all taking the, the bus, states, the local bus or the song towns or something, you know, some the, other form of transportation. In the states, that probably wouldn't happen because they're almost required to have to take you, you know, in a way. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, no, I, you know, I'm quite content over here. The language has been an issue at times because I know somebody's telling me something I don't understand. <laughs> but I, you know, I do have an application on my iPhone, so I, um, I wanted to get a keychain. And I didn't know what the word for keychain was, and it also wasn't in my application. Mm -hmm. um, but I had keys, so I just held up the keys, showed them the chain in the application, you know, keychain. And he goes, ah, okay, but they didn't have any in the store, but at least that was how I communicated with them. Mm -hmm. So there's ways to go around it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, um, you know, not to pitch it, but the, my Thailand survival kit, actually, we uh, include a phrase book. Mm -hmm. And the phrase book's small enough to fit in your pocket, which is good, but it has every category of from shopping, health, sports, medicine, if you need to go to a doctor. And it's all phonetically, you can pronounce it, mm -hmm. you know, phonetically, and give it a shot anyway. Right, right. And if they don't get it, you can point to it in Thai, right. and you can keep it in your pocket. So that's real helpful. And, and also, 
you start to see those words or hear them repetitively, and all of a sudden you start to pick them up. It does and say, oh, I know how to say that. Or if you're sitting with a Thai person, you can see it in English. You can see how you're supposed to say it. Mm -hmm. But then you can point to a Thai person and ask them to say it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you, start, you can listen over and over, and you can say it and start repeating or mimicking them, yes. parroting them, and you can pick up a lot of vocabulary really quick that way. Um, and a simple example is rice, you know, it's cow. Mm -hmm. But when I first came over, I said cow. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you don't have it the sounds tone the same, right, that's right. But I was ordering fried noose, not fried rice. <laughs> you know, they would go, well, okay, you know, I'd say cow pot moo, and they, they they knew I wanted fried rice with pork, but I wasn't saying cow pot moo, that's you right. know, which the is the tones. way you're supposed to say it. I still get beat up on YouTube for people saying <laughs> I pronounce things wrong, you know, I didn't use the right tone. And you can get by if you're in the right scenario. That situation dictates what they, you know, what they're going to determine you're trying to say. But, um... I mean, God, I don't know how many girls I walked by and told them they were having bad luck. Yeah, that's right, instead of that they're good looking. Good looking, because, you know, if you say sway, it's bad you know, luck. If bad you say sway, 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 then that's beautiful. Uh -huh. and, and they don't know you're trying to one and a couple of them understood i was trying to say that but some of them you were just walking by saying it i was wondering why i got these horrific looks <laughs> <laughs> so anything you want to pass on as a as a tip or uh, anything to the members back at the membership um, site or anything uh, why are you still over there yeah why are you still <laughs> over there um i you know from the airport how about traffic this is another thing driving uh, traffic. And traffic that was another one i wanted um, to mention I don't think I'd want to drive much in Bangkok. No. But around Chiang Mai, and I've been out in, you know, the middle of the five o'clock rush, going around the canal, and it's been, con you know, pretty condensed, etc. Really, no problems. It uh, isn't. Once you no. get to the hang of it, and you know what to expect. Yes. Which is to expect the unexpected. That's right. Once you know to expect the unexpected, that they can do anything at any moment. Mm -hmm. and, and you're and, kind of ready for it. Yeah, you just give them a wide berth. And I've always said, make everything you do slow and deliberate so mm -hmm. they know your intention of what you're doing so they can maneuver around you. Right. Everything's cool, you know? The, the premise I kind of have is to be far enough away from the car so that if someone opens up a car door, mm, I don't run idea. into it. Mm -hmm. And yet, far enough over that the cars can In the lane can next to you get can, around you a little mm -hmm. ways, even though they have to cross over a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but, yeah, if, if you can ride a scooter or a motorcycle, you're not going to really have any problems over no, here. No, just think. a different set of rules. Exactly. There and, are none. And the, and the, <laughs> They're just suggestions. The, the, left, <laughs> hand, the left hand sides only bothered me maybe three or four times when I turned from one soy to another one, and I just really wasn't, I was like maybe sightseeing or gawking a little you're bit. You're not and, paying attention. And, or there's no other go, traffic. Right, and I would following. just kind of be on the wrong side of the road, not really realizing I was there, and until I saw somebody coming, I was like, oh, i got to get over. But... Uh, no, it's not really much of an issue. A lot of the roads here are And you could have just moved further to the right to the curb, but That's they would have just thought you were driving like Thai people. <laughs> I've done that before. I've driven the wrong <laughs> way. The so they do go all the time. on the wrong side. So they just hug the curb. And, and the, the reason for it, for those of you who wonder why Thai people do it, like the superhighway, <coughs> if, you if you're down at this point and you need to come back to this point, the superhighway is one way. So you have to go all the way down, find a U-turn point, come all the way back up, U-turn again to come back to maybe go the 100 yards you really mm -hmm. want to go. So they just go 100 yards the wrong way, and then everybody's okay with that. Everybody's okay because yes. everybody does it. Nobody right. wants to go down two miles and do a U-turn and come back. Exactly. You know? I mean, it's I used to do that, but I'll go the wrong way now. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you kind of do the Thai style. I, mean, I just learned that if you can do it, it's okay as long as you're not interfering and with anybody else. And the key is, and this is what Thai people do, make sure when you go to do something like that, there's not police standing there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They'll do anything as long as there's no police. If there's no police, it's okay. If there's police, then you need to abide by the law. Right. And, you know, that's sort of the rule of thumb. Um, so any, any parting words for the members or anybody watching from YouTube or anything? No, I, you know, JC's site has got most of the information you really need from the Category 1 to the Category 3. I found places over here. I know one of the girls. I know she lives in a small apartment, two thousand baht a month. So you can get something really reasonable. Mm -hmm. It's not much more than a bed in a room, but but it's, hey, it's, if, it's, it's, what would it get you back home? Right. Two thousand baht right. is like sixty-five dollars. Right. It's sixty-six dollars. What so, would you get? Cardboard box and an overpass. I don't even know if you could afford Alpo <laughs> at that point. You know. So you can get things very inexpensive. I paid twelve thousand baht for the service department. 
but which is about 400, a little bit less with the exchange rate now. But you know, they come in three times a week, clean the room, change the linen. So in effect, I have my own maid service, which would be maybe another hundred baht, you know, or I mean another thousand baht or so. If I at home, it'd be that. an extra hundred or two hundred, right? <laughs> So I, I, I don't have to clean my room. I don't have to do anything except my own laundry, and uh, so and that laundry works out you really get fine. for about thirty baht a kilogram. That's right. Mm -hmm. And markets are everywhere. The one thing I will say about Thailand that I didn't really experience at first because I was a little, I just didn't go riding at night because I wasn't familiar enough with the roads. Mm -hmm. Once nighttime comes and you go out, Thailand comes alive. Yeah, it's, it's a whole different it's, it's, world. It's a completely different world. And that expression yeah. in night is different as night and day applies. It is. It is. Uh, you can go down Loi Khor where all the bars are. You go down in the daytime or you go on Google Maps and do the street walk down there. You don't see really anything there because it's all there. barred up. You go at night, it's all open. Another There's door. people all over the place. And all the businesses uh, the that are real bazaars. businesses in the daytime roll down their, their roll down doors, their security doors, and then businesses pop up. They rent out that space to people mm -hmm. at night, and all of a sudden it's just filled with restaurants and stuff like that. I saw this small little plaza at this one place, which is, uh, you know, it's a nice profession. It's a mall, kind of small mall there. And, uh, and uh, you go at night, and that whole mall area that's business in the daytime is full of, like, it's like a night market there. And, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, and there are several of them. They're all over. Oh, they're everywhere. So, uh, the street vendors come out. The foods all start to come out. And that's the best time to really enjoy Thailand. Uh, and it's very social. Time. People are off work, and this is how they socialize. Mm -hmm. They want to be out. They don't want to sit in, you know, like we sit, you know, order pizza delivered and sit in our room and don't see anybody. They <laughs> right. want to go out. They want to see people. They want to be interact with mm -hmm. socially with other people. I mean, that's the Thai society. And if you're afraid of Thai food a little bit, you know, there's you're plenty in Chiang of... Mai, there's plenty Patea, of Bangkok, uh, Phuket, any of those places, there's, there's restaurants. Yeah, there's, there's... Yeah, I mean, you, know, you got the fast foods, you got the KFCs, you got the Dunkin' Tonight Donuts. Tonight I'm taking you to the Italian yeah. restaurant where it's not... It's going to be Thai prices almost for Italian food, but mm -hmm. normally... Any uh, for, foreign food or foreign food is going to be disproportionately expensive. You know, it's going to be at least twice, maybe three that times is, as much per meal. There's a little place called Noise up where I live. Mm -hmm. It's Italian, and I, it's, uh, you know, maybe 120 baht or something like that. But if you go down to, uh, like, where we were over off of the Moon Mawang Road, that's, what, you know, probably going to be closer to 300 baht mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. basically the same food. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, so, but again, in the tourist area, prices are higher. But in comparison to the United States, they're still quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was telling JC this morning, I stopped at McDonald's and had an uh, um, Egg McMuffin breakfast. So the Egg McMuffin, uh, the um, coffee, and my um, uh, potato cake. And it was 80 baht, which is a little over $2. But that's still substantially less than what I pay for in the States. So uh, even that was a bargain, I thought. Yeah, yeah. It's about $2.66 mm -hmm. for breakfast mm -hmm. at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So. Well, Guy, I appreciate yeah. the interview. I'm sure they do, too. It's uh, always appreciate informative to talk to people that are already over here and doing what a lot of people dream of doing or thinking about doing. So to get somebody that's actually doing it and made the leap, <laughs> the I'm leap telling you, cojones, man, you know, <laughs> to make that leap to come over to do something uh, like this uh, that's uh, such a, a big change in your life, um, on a lot of faith, a lot of information, but a lot of faith as well. And I'm glad it's all working out for you. Again, thanks Thank for you. the, yep, the interview. It's been uh, wonderful. We got to see a genuine guy, just like they said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you get to see him real in the uh, swag, you yes. know. So that was very cool as well. So remember, when it comes to uh, retiring and spending your time, uh, your golden years, so to speak, which should be golden, uh, but back home they're not so golden anymore. But remember, <laughs> when it comes time to, you know comes time to make a change in your life, there's always, always an, option. an option. All right? For and Guy... My option is get over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for Guy, this is JC signing off. Take care, and I uh, hope to see you over here.